We're, we're good? Thank you. All right. So, Jeronda, thank you so much, girl. I am so happy you are finally able to do this interview with me. All right. So, to the listeners, just in case y'all don't know who Jeronda is, Jeronda was one of R. Kelly's ex sex captives okay she's been featured on the reel she's told her story um briefly she hasn't really gone in depth on the extent of the relationship between her and r kelly and now she's here with me to tell it all to tell what she couldn't say on national tv okay so it's fair game on the radio geronda thank you you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Anytime, girl. Anytime. I saw you in my comments on Instagram the other day, backing up everything that I said about R. Kelly and his gay lover, Bubba, who's been sleeping together for years. But before we get into that, okay, I want to ask you, how long were you with R. Kelly? I was with Rob for eight months. Eight months. Okay. And when did you meet him? I met him when I was 14. I met him at the trial. So it was about two weeks before my 15th birthday. So this was back in 2008. Okay, and this was in Chicago? Yes, it was in Chicago during his um, trial. All right. Now, how long did it take you guys to actually develop a sexual relationship? Because you did mention to me that you were a virgin when you met Rob. Yes, I was a virgin when I met Rob, but I did suffer from um, sexual abuse as a child. Okay, but just that was, you know, involuntarily, so technically you were still a virgin because you didn't agree to have sex with whoever violated you when you were a child. That is very true. Okay. But it didn't didn't take long because when I went out there, the very first time I went out there, um, me and Rob engaged in sex. And how old were you? I was 16 years old Wow! I went to his house. One year older than Aaliyah, when he married Aaliyah when she was 15. Yes. Okay. Now, so he was your first. Yes, he was. All right. So you were with him eight months. Now, you wrote a book, and it's called A Life After Abuse. A life beyond abuse. Okay, I'm sorry about that. A life beyond abuse. Okay, and to those of y'all listening, the link is below the video. I highly recommend that you get that book. She really goes into detail and she doesn't hold back, okay? So that link is below the video. Now, um, after you met Rob when you were 14, you guys didn't have sex until you were 16. And he was Um, your first. that's, That's correct. Now, you mentioned to me something interesting before this interview on the phone. You said that before you guys did anything, had any sex, there was a contract that you had to sign. Tell me about that contract. The contract actually came after we had engaged already. Oh. Yes. That's okay. when the contract came about. So he had me write um, a letter and sign two contracts. The first contract was a contract. Um, it was a non-disclosure agreement saying that I wouldn't talk about anything that happened at his house. Okay. And one of the um, things that was listed on that non-disclosure was that I was there to please him, even if that meant pleasure in someone else. Oh. So even if pleasing him meant that I had to pleasure someone else. So... I just had to please him. And that, that was, was in, all about Rob. And that was in one of the non-disclosure agreements that you signed. Yes, it was. That's okay. correct. And how old are you? How old were you when you signed this contract? I was sixteen um, years old when I signed that one. Okay. Did you? So obviously you read it. Did you read the whole thing? Did you? Was it in depth about you know the things that you had to do when it when it talked about? Uh, I guess when it talked when ah, when it described uh, pleasing him and somebody else. I didn't read the whole um, contract. I just read, like, a little bit of it. And then as I started trying to, like, really focus on it and read so I can comprehend and understand what I was um, getting ready to sign, he just, like, pretty much rushed it. He's like, oh, no, they're just saying you're not going to talk about what goes on here. Just go ahead and sign that. And I was like, okay. And I just signed my name. And I handed it back. And he handed me another one. And this contract was um, a, a contract saying that I worked for him, saying that he hired me on as an assistant. So I signed that contract because just, he just said, just um, sign this one too. And it just says that you worked for me. That's all. Just you had to do some, you know, assistant work. So I was like, oh, okay, no problem. And I signed it and I handed him the um, paper over. So as a 16 year old, you signed a contract saying that you were his personal assistant and it was a non disclosure yeah. contract and that you would please him even if it meant pleasing somebody else. 
Yes. Now, you did speak of some other things that was in the contract. You said that he made you write, I guess, a letter? Yes, I had to write a letter. It was um, He had a notepad with a um, yellow paper on it, and he had me write a letter. And in this letter, I was just confessing to things that I didn't do. Um, and some of the things were, he said that um, I had to write down that I had contracted an STD from him. Oh. And, yes, he wanted me to write down that I contracted an STD, I stole $250,000 from him, and that I had stole jewelry from him. I also had to write down that he fired me. And it was like an apology letter at the same time. I was like, um, it said, it started off like, dear Rob, I'm writing you to let you know that I'm sorry. And I just listed all the bad things that I, I had done. But in reality, I didn't do these things. So, and I had before, if he was telling me what to write, I told him, I was like, but I didn't do any of these things. And he said, well, if you didn't do it, you wouldn't have a problem writing it. And so in my head, I was like, yeah, you're right. Because I didn't do these things. Why not write it? So I wrote it down. I wrote down everything he told me to write down. At 16 years? very... At 16 years old, but it was, he was very specific. He told me, do not put the date. Oh. So it didn't, it didn't click in my head at the time. But he said, don't date it. And I dated it anyway. Okay, so you... Specific date, I just put that it was June of um, 2009 when I wrote it down. I just put the six and then a slash, and then I put 2009. I didn't write down the exact date. Okay. Now, let me, let me, let us discuss the pleasuring, because I did a video on the channel, uh, exposing R. Kelly and that he was gay, hypersexual, and I specifically named two men that had been carrying on uh, sexual relationships with R. Kelly for many, for many of years. Now, one, um, you actually got into it with on Instagram when I did out him. His name is, he goes by the name of Bubba. His page name is listed under at Ruby Chris, okay, and that will be in the link below uh, that would be in the description box as well if you guys want to look him up. And But you jumped in the comments when he was coming back saying that these were all lies to confirm a lot of things between him and Rob. What was that about? Now, Instagram, it did get a little crazy there. But, um, yes, Bubba, he is Rob's lover. I've witnessed some things between those two. And I don't know why Bubba is trying to deny everything because it is true. And that's why he ended up blocking me because I started speaking the truth about him where I had a relationship with uh, Jermaine. You know, oh. that's his real name. Okay. I had a relationship with him after I had left Rob. So he tried to, like, console me and just be there for me. And I was, I thought, like, it was genuine, but it wasn't. He ended up being just like Rob. He was the same type of manipulator. So he was doing the things to me that Rob was doing to um, me prior to dealing with Bubba. And Rob was doing these things to Bubba as well. Okay, so just for the record, Bubba is Jermaine. And so you met Bubba, whose real name is Jermaine, through R. Kelly. Now tell me about that experience, how you guys met. Because I, I kind of read an excerpt from your book, and that's why I'm telling everybody they need to really get that book, because you are really spilling a whole lot of wine okay you just broke the bottle open tell me about the first experience when you met rob and jermaine aka bubba together i actually it's actually reverse bubba is the recruiter he actually found me and took me to rob oh that's how, yes that's how that happened so they've been together and for I a actually, long time because this yes, was in 2000 2008 okay 2000 Eight. And right. then Bubba had friend requested me on um, on MySpace. So it was a while ago. But I was friends with Bubba for a while on MySpace before he actually messaged me. It was the end of 2008. I want to say around December is when he sent me a, a friend request. Okay. And so, um, I, I ended up talking to Bubba early 2009. And that's how that happened. I talked to him on uh, MySpace when my friend was actually looking for a tattoo artist. And Bubba, he has a um, tattoo parlor. He yeah. owns a tattoo shop, or at least he used to, back when I was talking to him. He owned it, and it's in Harvey. It was in um, Harvey. Okay, and this is in... So that's how me and him started talking. Illinois, correct? Yes, Illinois. Okay. Now, you met Bubba first. Now, Bubba took you to the trial, to where R. Kelly was being... Was being no. Ha- 
How did Bubba that happen? Did. I was I took myself to the trial, but Bubba's friend requested me. And then after I was um, involved with Rob, Rob told me that he actually sent Bubba looking for me. So what Rob did, I don't know how he um, got a hold of a paper. Well, so maybe somebody gave him a newspaper article because I was in a newspaper and I was also in Jet Magazine. So I'm um, guessing Rob told Bubba to like look this girl up, and he found me on MySpace, and that's how that happened. Because Rob actually told me himself that he told Bubba to go find me. Oh, wow. Okay, so after you met Rob, you then found out from Rob that this was all planned. Now, tell me about your first yes. sexual encounter, because you did mention in the book briefly about you, about Rob and Bubba being together and that you witnessed this. Can you just talk a little bit about that? You want to know about me witnessing them two or my first sexual encounter with uh, Rob? You witnessing Rob and Bubba engage in sex. That's what I want to know about. Oh, gosh. That was something. (laughs) So Rob had called me, and he told me to come upstairs to the game room. See, this was uh, around the time that you could still have cell phones, because now there's a rule he don't allow the girls to have cell phones. Okay. And his sex cult. So you do agree that it is a sex cult. Okay, It is a sex cult. Okay. And it's all to please him. Okay. So when I had went upstairs, and, you know, you have to um, knock before going into the uh, any room. You have to knock first. Okay. And I went up there. Rob um, let me in, and I, he set me down, and he had a serious look on his face. And I'm looking like, oh, shit. So I thought he was getting ready to go off about Bubba uh, talking to me in the studio because Bubba did talk to me in the studio, and I was for sure. I'm like, nobody saw it. So when he went off, I'm like, oh, maybe he did see it because, you know, Rob has cameras all over his house. Okay. So I thought maybe he saw it, and I started getting nervous, like he's about to snap. I talked to somebody I wasn't supposed to. But when he sat me down, he started talking about trust, and he asked if I could trust um if he could trust me, and he wanted to let me in on something. So I'm just sitting there like, oh, okay. So, like, the show, my shoulders, like, like they dropped. I'm like, okay, that's your release. It's not about what I thought it was about. So you thought you were going to get your ass whooped, but instead yes, it was something else. Okay. I was scared. Like, I was shaking. My palms were sweaty. I was really scared. Okay. But it wasn't about that. It was about him and Bubba. So he wanted to make sure that I would never judge him and that, you know, he could trust me. And, I, you know, I let him know, like, you can trust me. I won't judge you. And so we just, we sat down. He was sitting across from me on another couch, and we were just looking at each other and talking. And next thing you know, there was a knock at the door, and I'm like, Okay, so I didn't know what to expect. And when Rob went up, he went to go open the door, and then Ann walked Bubba. And I was like, okay. And Rob sat down. He sat down on the couch first, and he sat back where he was already sitting. And Bubba, he walked in, and he walked over, and he sat right next to um, He sat next to Rob. And I'm looking like, okay, well, yeah, something, something's about to happen. And then I thought, and in my head, it started, like, um, coming up again. I'm like, well, maybe he is about to say something. This is Bubba. But that wasn't the case. Bubba, like, he looked at Rob, like, for approval. And Rob kind of, like, gave him a stern look, like, yeah, it's okay to do what, whatever. And that's when Bubba got down on his knees. Rob, you know, pulled his penis out, and Bubba started giving him hit. Wow. And at first, it was shocking, but I was like, you know, I can't judge him. So I had to have a poker face. So I'm just sitting there, but in my head, I'm like, so does this mean? But I had so many questions in my head. But, of course, I wasn't judging him at the same time. So I'm just questioning his actions without judging him. I was just wondering. I wanted, you know, to know, like, is this really what I'm thinking it is? But you know, So you're watching it. Rob R. Kelly. Yes, I'm watching R. Kelly. Grammy Award winning R. Kelly in front sex. of you receive oral oh, sex man. from a man. From Bubba. From Bubba. Yes, Jermaine. It, it happened. Jermaine. Jermaine Maxie. It happened. And that was the first time you had saw any type of, uh, uh, I guess, relationship between R. Kelly and a man. That was the first time. That was the first time. Now, did they I've take it any further that. from You that? have to read the book to find out. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> now, you did mention that... Because I asked you, I said, do you think R. Kelly is gay, bisexual, or straight? And your answer was what? He's gay. And why would you say that? R. Kelly is definitely gay. Because 
no like man would treat women the way he treat them, and he treat his um, male friends way better than the women he surround himself with. We're treated like slaves, and we're nothing but sex objects to him but yet the men he respect them and he treat them better it's like he's always happy when he's around guys but when there's no guys in the room he could be in a room full of women and he has no emotion towards it it's like he feel nothing and he'll just look around and he seems pissed off all the time like rob always seems angry but when he's around a man like you see like a happier side of him he's smiling he's telling jokes and you're like you know what you all right you actually a cool dude you know i could be around you but when it's just him with women it's the complete opposite He's always mad. And then on top of that, the reason why I say he's gay is because every single time, like, we had some form of, after the first time, every time after uh, the very first time, he always wanted a dildo on his ass. A dildo on his ass. Yes, he always had a dildo in his ass. Wait a minute. You said a Grammy Award with an R. Kelly likes a dildo in his ass. Now, did did you put a dildo in his ass? I did. You did? At, at 16 years old, you put a dildo in this grown man's ass. Yes, at 16 years old, I put a dildo in R. Kelly's ass. Okay, now you got to tell me about at least one experience or how this even transpired. How did he even get you to put the dildo in his ass? Can you please just tell me about one experience? Just one. Okay, one of the experiences I had with uh, Rob, we was in this room called Music One. Okay. And he came in, and he seemed like he was in a rush. He was like, I really need you to do something real quick. And I'm like, okay, what do you need? And he said, here. And I looked, I was like, what do you want me to do with it? So I'm thinking he wanted me to use it on me. I'm like, I'm not I'm not broken in. I haven't experienced this side yet. That's what I was thinking in my head. But, of course, I was just. Because you thought he wanted you to put it in your me. ass. Yes. I thought he wanted me to do some stuff to myself. And I'm like. Um, I'm not ready, but when he laid down, he pulled his pants down and he laid down. He was like, just, just put it in. I, I looked up and put it in where? And he told me, like, get on your knees and crawl to me. So I got down. Get on your knees and do what? Hold on, because you're talking real fast. Slow down, slow down. Get on your knees and do what? He said, get on your knees and crawl to me. So I got down on my knees and I crawled over to Rob. And he said, okay, now put it in. I said, put it in where? Because I still have my clothes on. So I'm fully clothed here. And his pants were down at his ankles. He had them up on the couch. And he's like, just put it in. And so I was like, oh, okay. And I said, are you sure? And this was like a regular, like a rubbery type of filling dildo. There was no lubrication, like no lube at all. It was a and big, di- said, it was a big average size dildo, like a, like a penis size. It wasn't like a Rob butt plug. Was very specific. It was an actual dildo. It was black. It was an all black dildo, and it was nine inches long because he was very specific on how he liked his dildo. Wait a minute. So he took nine inches. Okay, keep going. Keep Rob, going. Keep going. He took nine inches. I put the dildo up, and it, it just slid right in. And he said, "Okay, you can stop." He's like, "I got it from here." Then he just started like grinding his hips and everything, and I had to do nothing. He just told me to sit back in the spin around chair and just watch, and he was just. Getting off, he was grinding his hips and does uh, playing now, with the dildo. Now, what position he was, was he in? Like, was he laying on his back with the dildo? Yes, his... he was laying on his back, and he had his legs up in the air. And then once I put it all the way in, he said, okay, I have it from here. And then he put his legs down, and that's when he started, like, thrusting his hips. And then he started, you know, masturbating while he was – he used his um, left hand to play with the dildo – and he started pushing it in and out and while he was grinding his hips. And his right hand, he was masturbating. And he told me he did not want me to get involved. I was to just sit down and watch him. And that's what I did. I just sat in the spin around chair and I watched him. Now, you're not the first person that, that actually said something. You're just the first person that's actually gone in depth to expose who he really is. Now, there was a woman that came out. She never showed her face. There was a local radio station that did, had done an interview. And the girl had spoke of her meeting R. Kelly at the mall. And then he invited her back. Flew her out, put her in a hotel. Then when she got there, he was in the studio. He laid down and asked her. She said she had long nails on. And he, she, he made her stick the nails in his anus while he, he got off. And it was her first encounter meeting R. Kelly. Now, you did. Yeah. So I just, I just want to put it out there that you're not the first person saying this. But you're the first person to go on record to say that R. Kelly is gay. 
and you know firsthand because you've experienced it. Now, you did mention briefly that um, you actually had to uh, strap up with the strap on, with the dildo, and he was yes, on off. I did. Okay, tell, tell me about that. There was, um, he had this nightstand, he had this room that's connected to the game room upstairs. And it's a room, it's full of mirrors. So it's a sex room to me. It's a mirror, the entire room is a mirror, and there's a mirror above the bed. And and the nightstand, he had two nightstands on, you know, one on each side of the bed. He told me to reach in and, um, into the nightstand and grab something. He said, whatever is in there, you put it on. And here I am, inexperienced. I didn't know, you know, how to put on the damn strap. So when I pulled it out, I'm looking, I'm like, uh, how do I put it on? He said, I'll, I'll show you. So it was a yellow, the dildo that was, um, the strap was actually a yellow dildo. And he helped me put it on. And then he said, okay, you just follow my lead. And then he just directed me. He guided me on how to do it. And I had him bent over on the bed. He was on all fours, just bent over doggy style. And I got on. R. Kelly, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. You go ahead. Yes. You- R. Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly was on all fours, bent over on this queen size bed. In his in the sex room, and you and were he was bent over on all fours, and I had this yellow dildo strapped to me, and he told me when I uh, you know put it in his ass to just you know just go really slow, then speed it up, then slow down and speed up. So he had things already. He let me know how to do it, and I did that. Then he told me to slap his ass and call him my little bitch. So that's what I did. I mean, it was weird looking at myself in the mirror, you know, just you know going back and forth with R. Kelly and slapping his ass, calling him a little bitch and stuff. It was weird. It was like a mirror. And you were how old at this time? I was still 16 years old. Now, where were your parents? Everybody is asking this question. How were Everybody you able wanted to know where my parents were? Well, my um, my father, he was incarcerated. So he was in jail at the time that I was dealing with Rob. And my mom, I was always telling her that I was going out with my friends. You know, this is the summertime when I um, first started dealing with him. So it was easy for me to just say, oh, I'm going out with friends. And then I was going home. So I wasn't, I was there, but every so often Rob was like, okay, you can go home. Because I was like, I have to go check in. Like, my mom would need to see me. So he would send me home, but I had to come back. So that's how I built up that trust with him because every time I went home, I came back the same day or early morning the next day. So I was always going right back. So your mom had no clue that you were dealing with R. Kelly at 16 years old? So my we, mother had no clue that I was dealing with Rob. Like, nobody knew that I was dealing with R. Kelly. Like, they didn't know. Okay. Now, there are a lot of people coming, because you just said a lot for a baby. And this was during when he was actually on trial for uh, peeing on Sparkle's niece and having sex with her on video. Now, did he ever video you guys? I mean, did you, were you guys ever taped? Yes, he did. Like, when I um, first started dealing with Rob, he had an iPhone, and I believe it was probably, like, the iPhone 3 or 3G or something like that. And he would pull out his phone. He would record me on his phone. He would take pictures of me on his phone. And he also had, um, it was a camera. He always had, like, it's a Canon. No, a Nikon. He had a Nikon camera. Okay. And he used to set it up. It was camera or Canon or Nikon. And he used to set it up on a tripod, and he would record us. So he would be, uh, like, filming all of our sexual acts. He so he, did, he film the time, did he film the time that you were doing him from the back with the strap on? Did he film that time? Yes, he did. So that's on tape. That's on tape. Shit. So he was like, he, and he filmed everything. He filmed everything but the very first time. But after the first time, everything was recorded. It was filmed. And he would show me videos with him with other people. And we would just sit down and we would watch it. And he had me watching um, porn with him. It was called Barely Legal. So I was watching some porn called Barely Legal. Like child porn. I don't know if it was uh, kids or if it was adults that looked like kids, but they looked pretty young to me on Barely Legal. Oh, wow. Okay. And he also had me watching gay porn with him as well. But he said he's not gay, and he's like, you know, I'm just watching this, but I'm not gay. Now, I said, now had okay. you ever seen him besides receiving oral sex from uh, Bubba, who shut down his Instagram page after we outed him? Um, Had you ever seen him have sex with a man yes i did 
And was it Bubba or a different man? And that's in my book. So every what I witnessed is in my book. Wow. Okay. I, I know you were receiving like a settlement and a non disclosure. You know, you were under a non disclosure, so you couldn't talk about anything, but I know you recently stopped receiving payments voluntarily. Yes, when I um when I told my story, when I went public with my story and I talked about the things that I've been through with him, that's when he stopped paying me. Because the month that it was August, the month that my article came out in BuzzFeed, I actually received my payment. Like I received it. How, how much were you getting month. per month? Uh, Rob paid me. He was paying me five thousand dollars per month. Okay, to keep quiet. And, and that was hush. Been, and that was hush he money. He had been doing this for years. It was hush money. Now there are rumors. And I wouldn't even call them rumors because, I mean, I've had a few girls confirm that they, like Faith, she came out and said that she had herpes. Is R. Kelly a carrier of herpes? Do you know that? Yes, Rob is a carrier. Now, is it okay if I ask if you contracted that? Did I contract it? Yeah, did you contract herpes from R. Kelly? Yes, I did. Wow. Were there any other STDs that Rob carried? Because I know... um, a young woman that I interviewed last year received chlamydia orally. I don't know if you heard about that, but does he carry any other STDs? Not that I know of. Okay. Okay. Wow. And so, and I I, I just kind of have to keep reminding people that we spoke earlier because we kind of have to set up the interview to make sure it's not going everywhere. You spoke of dealing with working with the FBI. Yes. How are you able to speak about that? I cannot. Okay. Okay. But can you confirm or deny whether or not there's an inve- investigation going on into R. Kelly right now? There is an investigation that's um, happening. Okay. And do so you? So they are investigating R. Kelly. That is true. And you've worked with them personally. Yes, I have worked with them personally. Okay. Wow. Now, are you friends with any of the girls that are still with R. Kelly right now? Because I do know that Dominique was recently freed and apparently Lifetime got that on tape. Are you friends with Dominique? Yes, I am friends with Dominique. Okay. Now, is she free? Yes, Dominique is free. But is there a but? Sounds like there's a but. (laughs) She is free, you know. But and the rest of that is not my story to tell. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'll just have to wait on an interview from Dominique, and hopefully she'll speak up here soon. Um, I do thank you for having the courage to come out and just be so personal with your story. And I know a lot of people are talking mad shit out here on the Internet, saying this, oh, y'all wanted this. But at the end of the day, you were a child. And you were one year older than Aaliyah. The difference between you and Aaliyah, Aaliyah was a a star. You were just an average girl who just was given too much freedom from her parents. And you wound it up in that situation. And I just, if anybody hasn't told you they apologize, I want to say that I'm sorry that happened to you. And I can't imagine what you've gone through. Have you sought any counseling or anything? Were I've you trauma? Never, were you traumatized? I've never had, um, yes, I was traumatized, but I've never had counseling. And thank you so much for that. I don't, I don't hear that often, but, um, I did a lot of self meditating. So I used to just light some candles that smelled good. And I would listen to very relaxing music. It is relaxing music has always helped. And I used to write, I did a lot of writing, and that helped me get through it. And, of course, my husband, who was there, and, you know, he listened to me and my story, hearing me crying. I was always crying on his shoulder about things. So if it wasn't for my husband, I think I would not have actually made it through. Oh, that's a help. That is a strong man. I got to tell you, you guys have kids together. How old are your kids? Three. (laughs) Girls or boys? Two, I have a one, two, and three-year-old, all girls. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh-oh. So you you know you know, uh, the universe is, is trying to fix that karma in your family. So now you're going to have to watch your babies. You can't believe that them. That is when, very true. I'm serious. It, it's like it's going to keep. 
I, I solely believe in this. It's going to keep feeding things into the family until somebody puts a stop to it. And so now that you have three girls, you're going to have three that you're going to have to watch to make sure that they don't wind up in the situation that you wound up in as a child. And so are you hoping, are you, do you want R. Kelly to be tried for his yes, crimes and for violating you and other and others? Absolutely. He deserves he deserves it. And I feel like now his time is up and he really do need to pay for what he's done. Because I'm not the only one he abused and damaged. There is tons of women. Why aren't and the those, girls speaking? Everybody is scared because he always has something on them. He always has dirt on the people he uh, messed around with. But the thing is, I was a minor, and I left the situation while I was still young. So it never got to the point where he had me having sex with minors as well. So he don't have that dirt on me. And he has that dirt on a good majority of the people he's been with. Wait a he minute. He waits until they're of age, and then he has them have sex with minors. Everybody around Rob, they all have sex with minors. What is the youngest that you know of? The youngest that I know of was 14. 14 that Rob has sex with? Yes, the youngest that I know of that I was there to witness was 14. And can you reveal her name or no? I cannot reveal her name. She still hasn't come forward. She's still with Rob right now? She's still involved with Rob right now. Wow. And where are her parents in this? Are they fighting to, to get her back? No, her parents are not fighting. Her parents have been paid off, and they are probably still receiving money. Wait a minute. So Rob is paying this little girl's parents. Yes, Rob is still paying this girl's parents. And this little girl is still... Well, I believe he's still paying, but I do know they received a large payment. They received a large settlement. But he could possibly still be paying them, and that's why they're not out. Okay, so, wow. And Joycelyn, I know her parents are fighting hard. Do you Have you met Joycelyn? Have you spoken with her? I've never met Joy. Okay. So, I've never met her so I've everything never that the savages her. are saying, from your experience being with R. Kelly, is true. It is, yes. So she had to sign an NDA saying all of this. Yes, she she's did. brainwashed. She's manipulated. She's asked to perform all of these crazy sexual things with Rob. Do you, do you, feel, all, do you feel also she's being asked to do the same thing? Because I know you did mention... Um, in a phone call earlier that Rob can only come if the only way that Rob can come or orgasm is if he's being played if something is up his ass yes that is very true so only oral sex you mentioned oral sex and some something being played in his ass I mean something up his ass is the only way that Rob R. Kelly can have an orgasm that is true because anytime that you're just having sex with him just normal stuff he don't come. He always wants to come. He wants to pull out and just finish with masturbation and putting some up his ass. That's how he always finish. Wow, and you were a baby doing that. And, again, I apologize. And, I, and I'm saying I'm sorry on behalf of our community because in our community, especially the black community, we always tend to want to victim shame and blame the girls and say that they asked for this. They were fast. They wanted this. But at the end of the day, as adults, we're supposed to protect our children and not violate them. And you were a child. And I'm saying on the record nationally that I am sorry that this happened to you. And I hope one day that you will get justice. Thank you. And I pray that um, your book does well because it's a very in-depth book. Okay, if you guys have not had a chance to read Jeronda's book that she wrote herself, okay, she stopped receiving payments from R. Kelly. She broke her non-disclosure agreement to come out and tell you guys exactly who he is. And so, Jeronda, again, could you uh, let everybody know where they can get that book? My book is for purchase on my website, which is JerondaPace.com. And what is it called again? It's called A Life Beyond Abuse. 
All right, and the link will be below in this video. And I just want to say thank you again. And now I got to go. Okay, Jeronda? <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, I appreciate it, girl. It takes courage. I'm serious because, you know, it's hard, especially in today's society with people victim uh, shaming you. And I heard and I saw Bubba typing saying that you were a crazed fan and you didn't know what you were talking about. And then you blasted him saying, wait a minute, Jermaine, you called him by his government name. <laughs> yes, and, and I got blocked. <laughs> he blocked you. He he shut his whole page down. Blocked. He did. <laughs> and he did say that he was going to try to sue me for defamation of character. And I told him to tell his lawyer to call me personally. Okay. And I ain't heard <laughs> nothing yet. Okay. And, and, and for those that are thinking, oh, R. Kelly's going to sue. R. Kelly has not sued yet. Okay. His reputation is done. All right. He's losing money. Music stream services are dropping him. Okay. His concerts are getting shut down. Which lawsuit has he filed? Just ask Not yourself one. that. Not one. And what is that? That is an omission of guilt. So thank you again, Jeronda. And thank you to everyone listening out there. Um, please feel free to follow me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Unwind with Tasha K. And hell, if you didn't like this video, you can still subscribe anyway, just so you could cuss my ass out. Not that I'm going to really give a damn. Anyway, now I got to go. Bye. Bye, Jeronda. Bye. <laughs>